Before we dive into this, because this is so exciting, I love talking about Nintendo Direct stuff. I want to just ask you guys, to not just subscribe to the channel, right? Yeah, we're trying to get to 150,000 subscribers. I would appreciate it if you subscribe. But what I actually want you guys to do is go down in the comment section right now now and tell me what game from Nintendo you are most anticipating to arrive on their next generation hardware. What franchise is it? Is it a new IP? Is it Zelda, Mario, Xenoblade? What are we talking about? Which one are you most excited about? I know it's not Nintendo Direct related, but I just, it, I've been thinking a lot about this and I think the answer for me might be obvious, but I don't know what the answer for you is and I want to know. So I've had myself a bit of a crazy week and it only is fitting that we get here to Thursday, the first Thursday of June, and we have some rumors regarding when the next Nintendo Direct is going to happen. Now, look, Nintendo's already announced that we're getting a Nintendo Direct in the month of June, but not when. And now we have some widely believed speculation and then an actual rumor about the exact day of the Nintendo Direct. Direct. But first, we get into the rumor about what week the Direct is coming, because as you see in the title, it's, yeah, soon. So let's go ahead and dive right in. First, by this video by Doctrae81, it says, is the June Direct next week? So you can already tell uh, that this is about to be in next week. But as we scroll down this video, there's a little bit of evidence. And the first comes from this, where Nintendo announced the Summer of Play. Now, they had this exact same thing. Uh, it was slightly different branded, but they announced it Last year, around the same time, it was June 14th, and the Nintendo Direct happened exactly one week later. And here you go, they announce it again for this year. So that's really exciting. And Walmart of Canada did this thing as well, where they said something back on June 14th. And the same thing happened. We have the Play Nintendo is what they're calling it this year. And they did this now that it's officially June. When are we seeing the Nintendo Direct? So that to me is obviously some circumstances circumstantial speculative evidence that there could be a Nintendo Direct next week. But there's more than that out there because, look, speculation is what it is. We're all free to speculate. In fact, a huge chunk of this video is going to be a bunch of speculation. But, but what about an actual rumor from someone who may be credible? Again, this is maybe because it's really hard for me to verify, but it at least gives us a jumping off point. And as always, remember that rumors are literally meant to be doubted. Look up the definition of rumor. You're supposed to have doubt. But we have this post over here at the Gaming Leaks and Rumors subreddit, and it says, Nintendo Direct next week, date leaked by a Spanish insider. A humble insider known in the Spanish community and called Mr. Dry has talked about the date of the Nintendo Direct on Twitter, dropping that it will be next June 11th. This man has already got several things right that I have not seen anywhere before, and he may be right here. He says, he has good contacts in the industry and as has been seen in the past with issues related to Silent Hill and recently with Metal Gear and Resident Evil, where in their podcast they provide a lot of information about the future of the franchise. Now, of course, that is just a summary, but I wanted to bring that summary up because that summary does contain information about the history of this person. But if we go over to the actual tweet they linked, you'll see this is the this is how they do dates over in Europe. So this is totally correct here, 611. And then uh, this behind the games account, they are a content creator, says there is speculation since the 12 hour maintenance of the My Nintendo store on June 11th is known. I already put the source from a day ago, by the way. So there's this 12 hour maintenance happening as well which you could argue is still only circumstantial, but the guy responded and he said, in my case, that is not the source, but thanks for pointing it out. And behind the games response here says, there is no other source. Nintendo's secrecy for the Direct only gives rise to hypotheses based on movements that can evidence it. The only ones with information from Nintendo about the Direct are Pioro and Midori, uh, more of projects, but far from that. And with the shielding from Nintendo, there is no one on the internet with that information except for Akawa. So what Behind the Games is doing here is providing that doubt, that doubt that this person has an actual source about the Direct, uh, about the date of the Direct and stuff like that. So that's that's what this person is doing, is exactly what I said you need to do and have doubt over rumors. But it is notable that Pioro and Midori, while they are the tier one leakers, they are the only ones that have hints and or ideas of 
when directs are happening. Nate the Hate oh, in the past has had uh, direct dates correct. Uh, even PH Brazil that we've talked about, he's been correct about direct dates. Uh, so has Jeff Grubb and several others. Pretty much anyone who has industry contacts where their games are going to appear in the direct tend to find out ahead of time when the direct is actually going to happen. Now, there's a number of people that also get that stuff wrong, but the point is that they're not the only two. They're just the two most reliable, and they don't really leak direct dates. They just leak things that are possibly in the direct or games and stuff like that. So there are more exciting leaks, to be fair. A date is nothing. What matters is what's announced in the damn thing. But, you know, that is just for you guys to sit here and debate about down in the comments and doing your thing and getting all angry and upset or believing this or not believing this or whatever you want to do. Bottom line is we're getting a Nintendo Direct this month. That's not even speculation. Nintendo told us Nintendo Direct is happening here in the month of June, and it's primarily Primarily focused on Nintendo Switch games in the second half of 2024 and also there will be nothing about the Nintendo Switch 2 in this direct again that all comes from Furukawa that was uh, a thing he said now could one of these games be for Switch but also be cross-gen with Switch 2 for a 2025 release maybe but also Furukawa said there would be news and announcements or an announcement at least about the Nintendo Switch 2 at some point during this current fiscal year so I wouldn't really worry about or put a ton of stock into everything what I do want to sit back and go is talk about how exciting of a time this is though uh there's some weird things going on that I think we need to talk about uh, just, just to kind of clear the air because something is happening today that has people really upset about these summer showcases and in particular summer game fest. And I think the anger might be a little bit misplaced, but it's understandable why some people are upset because they don't realize how expensive this stuff is. But there's this article over on Esquire here about Summer Game Fest. And recently, Jeff Keighley said that he hopes that any year now will be the perfect year for Nintendo to want to partake because so far Nintendo hasn't. And it says a Summer Game Fest, the best thing that happened to gaming or the worst. And this is important because it's going to go over the financials of what it costs to actually be part of Summer Game Fest and why it's essentially triple-a games once in a while it's an indie game but when it is it's it's one from a studio that's had a lot of success so a hush fell over the crowd as the theater went dark there's nothing more powerful than imagination a familiar voice boomed from 137 speakers suspended around the cavernous room just as an ominous trailer began playing on a massive screen one minute later the owner of that voice stepped on stage in an absinthe green suit with wide peak lapels nicholas cage i'm so happy to be invited to your very very cool club cage said to a roar of laughter and applause he wasn't talking to members of the soho house west hollywood screening room but to a raucous crowd of video game professionals at the fourth annual summer game fest in youtube theater when i make movies one of my favorite genres is horror cage continued as he was on stage to promote his cameo in a survival horror game called dead by daylight and had already sold more than twice as many copies as the mega hit elden ring i play this heightened exaggeration version of a film actor named nick cage he said before coughing and apologizing for his seasonal allergies more than 27 million people watched this moment via summer game fest online stream and at least 2 million more views than espn would draw during the college football playoff national championship between michigan and washington seven months later for the video game industry summer game fest has quickly become a combination of san diego comic-con and the now defunct electronic entertainment expo the single most important place for gamers to watch new trailers for studios to show off their wares and they're not wrong here they're not over exaggerating the audience watching summer game fest is significantly larger than watching the xbox showcase watching nintendo directs and all that it's a massive audience same with the uh actually the even bigger audience that happens at the game awards anyways with 180 billion in video game revenue last year according to newzu more than global box office and music sales combined summer game fest is arguably one of the two most important pop culture events of the year now alongside its sister event in december the game awards all right but on like Comic-Con or E3, Summer Game Fest and the Game Awards are owned, operated, and hosted by one person, Jeff Keighley, a 45-year-old Canadian journalist and Muppet enthusiast with a penchant for tailored dinner jackets. All right, so let's get down to what really matters in all of this, how much it costs to be part of this event. It's a very long article. They talk about E3, and they go into the history of everything, and here's where we get to the meat and potatoes. These shows are really 
effing expensive. One insider says, referring to both Summer Game Fest and the Game Awards. According to pricing details shared with me by multiple marketing professionals who request anonymity, running a trailer during Summer Game Fest main show this year costs two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for one minute, three hundred and fifty thousand for one and a half minutes. Four hundred and fifty thousand for two minutes, and five hundred and fifty thousand dollars for two and a half minutes. They also say that last year's edition of the Game Awards featured the same pricing tiers. If you add it all up, the one and two and a half minute trailers, etc., aired during last year's Summer Game Fest, those prices could translate into nine point six five million dollars as a haul for the main show of course last year prices may have been different and we don't know how to account for shorter 30 second trailers nor the longer segments in which keely invites a developer on stage so are they paying extra time for the developer to be there are the 30 second trailers significantly cheaper or maybe even offered for free to people like indie devs we don't really obviously know any of that uh, but for many smaller and independent studios these sums are astronomical sometimes far more than the entire marketing budget for an individual game so the current pricing tiers make summer game fest an unattainable goal for most indie developers and publishers and pr professionals who represent indie games told me however this is the thing it sounds like a lot of money but several marketing and PR folks at larger studios say these trailer premieres are worth the spend. As far as general brand awareness, the impact is pretty huge. One of them says the caveat here is that it depends on the placement and trailer length. Longer slots perform better and seem to drive more coverage, whereas short trailers don't capture quite the same attention. So... What's really fascinating about all of this, and it goes in the ticket prices and basically all the revenue or all the ways in which uh, these game events make money, is my first reaction is that actually doesn't surprise me. And you may argue this is why Nintendo doesn't partake, but Nintendo's a multi-billion dollar company. These are like a drop in the bucket sort of money for them as well, like a wipe your ass with that kind of money. So it's not like it's like super expensive for someone like Nintendo, but they have to weigh if the price of that for the increased audience size is worth it over just, you know, just their own Nintendo director. For the most part, probably not. Maybe at the Game Awards where the audience is actually 80 million, Million, not 27 might hit 30 million with summer game fest this year but 80 million last year you know watch the game awards you could argue that that's even even bigger audience so maybe that might be worth it more for nintendo and nintendo has actually shown things at the game awards so you can argue nintendo knows that that audience is at least worth something uh but i do find it fascinating some of the negative reactions to this only because guys e3 was more expensive uh just to get floor space for a booth was more expensive than this, let alone having to pay planners and buy the actual stuff you're going to put in the damn booth and get it all made. And then on top of that, you have all these showcases you're doing. You got to pay for the theaters and rent them out. And like the overall cost for a big company to be part of E3 in its entirety would be in the millions. So this is actually significantly cheaper than what it would be to be part of E3 back in the day, but obviously still a pretty significant haul. Uh, there's a lot of expenses that go into all of this, of course. It is expensive to host the thing. It is expensive uh, to get all your partners involved, and they have sponsors and stuff as well. And who knows how much of the money he gets to pocket and the taxes involved. There's a whole lot of spiel. But the big thing is, obviously, it's not very inviting for indies. Now, I will note that the article doesn't do a great job of pointing out that Jeff Keighley has indie-specific events. So well, Summer Game Fest does mostly highlight the AAA industry because they're the ones that have the budgets to afford this sort of stuff. He's got like Day of Devs that happen. That has a lot of indie stuff. Um, you know, there's going to be a women like game section that's going to involve a lot of indie studios as well with a separate Summer Game Fest event. Uh, and so Jeff Keighley actually does a really good job promoting indie games, in my opinion. For someone who's trying to promote the entire industry, Summer Game Fest, the actual main event is more AAA, but then he's got all these other events that are really more indie specific specific. So I would argue that I think it's a little bit unfair to say, oh, he's just pricing. Yeah, out of that big main show, maybe, but that big main show, you're already going to get overlooked. Like if you 
if you, unless you're like something that's really desired, like a Hollow Knight Silk song, if you just drop some random unknown indie game in the middle of a show with triple A behemoths, it's going to get overshadowed and mostly forgotten about anyways. So I could argue that main show event isn't really great for most indie companies anyways, even if it was affordable. Uh, and we know a lot more indie games are obviously showing off during uh, the Game Awards, which might, ha might have a different pricing structure uh, depending on studio size that we don't know. So I just want to throw out there that I understand that we're all looking forward to this June Nintendo Direct, and I'm really excited about it. And it's understandable why Nintendo hasn't been part of Summer Game Fest because they don't really think that audience is big enough to justify what they're doing. Plus, hey, they haven't been part of it this entire Switch generation, and yet look at how successful Nintendo Switch has been. But I will say... Don't be surprised if whenever Switch 2 launches that first year, whether it's next summer or the summer after, if Nintendo does decide to participate in Summer Game Fest. Because one thing Nintendo had going for them back in the early days of Switch is E3 still existed. And so they were able to get the Switch in front of audiences they couldn't normally reach due to E3. And that could be viewed as a key marketing strategy for them. Now, when E3 went away, essentially after 2019, Switch was well into its life cycle and didn't need something like that to continue to be relevant. And I'm not saying Switch 2 needs to be a Summer Game Fest to be a success, but I'm saying it doesn't hurt. So I could see if that first year, at least, when Switch 2 comes out, that maybe Nintendo drops a massive game trailer, just one probably, at the event. I, I, I'm not going to rule that out as a possibility, and that's not going to replace a June Nintendo Direct where they would have a bunch of trailers. In fact, they could drop a teaser trailer and say more to be seen in the June Direct on X day or whatever if they advertise it ahead of time. So we've actually seen people do that at Summer Game Fest. Microsoft has put games in there and said, hey, see more at our gaming event later. Uh, I do think that Nintendo could end up participating in such a way. Remember, Sony even still thinks it's valuable enough to buy trailers at Summer Game Fest, uh, even though they weren't participating in E3 anymore. So I will say there probably will be a time where the stars align that Nintendo participates, but I am not like scared away by these prices. I think to us lay people, us gamers, it sounds like a lot of money because it is, but also it's a hell of a lot cheaper than it used to be. So I'm, I'm not really miffed by this. And if that's the going rate and there's a lot of competition for spots, I get it. Uh, so take that for what it is. Now, I'm just going to sit back now and wonder about this magical Nintendo Direct. When's it going to happen? What are we going to get? Uh, man, I'm as excited. Are these rumors and speculations true about next week, June 11th? Look, we'll know soon enough because if it's June 11th, it should get announced on June 10th. Uh, and by the way, starting tomorrow, tomorrow is Summer Game Fest. We have a bunch of live streams happening literally tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We got live stream city going on. So I hope you guys decide to tune into all of that. I want to thank you so much for being here. I am Nathaniel Robojets from Nintendo Prime. Catch you guys in the next video.